On today's episode, we'll be talking about animal spirits, a green cloaked entity, past loved ones, and much more. All coming up on this edition of Paranormal Mysteries. Thank you all for joining me, and welcome once again. I am your host, Nick Ryan. I'd like to remind everyone how much I appreciate you tuning into the show. Your support and generosity is always amazing. And if you're new to the show, please remember to subscribe, share, and review the podcast. This supports us by helping new listeners to discover the show. And if you'd like to support us even further by becoming a patron or by donating, please visit us at patreon.com slash paranormalmysteries or at buymeacoffee.com slash paranormal. These links and others can be found in the show notes. And if you've encountered the paranormal and would like to share your story, please email me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com. All experiences, no matter how big or small, are always welcome. And with that being said, our first story of the day comes to us from Ray, and Ray's story is called My Ghost Light Experience. Ray says, Hi Nick, I just wanted to thank you again for the platform you've created for us. It's my favorite by far, and I'm hoping to hear my own experience read by you as well. You give other stories the genuine respect most deserve through your narration, and I'd be most honored. So, here it is. My girlfriend and I experienced something I feel most never get the chance to on this late night in an old local cemetery outside of Laurenburg, North Carolina. Whether you can believe it or not, it's 100% real. I also have a photo and video proof as well that I can send in if you're interested. It doesn't come close to doing what we saw justice, but it's proof for us nonetheless. It started out with us just parked on the backside of the cemetery, where no one any longer are laid to rest. We were discussing all the what-ifs and just kind of spooking ourselves with shared stories when a flashing light caught my eye in my rearview mirror. This light was orangish and about the size of a softball. It was approximately one foot off the ground and about 20 yards away when I first noticed it. The light started moving toward us in an eerily slow and snaky kind of left-to-right movement, weaving through the gravestones. It stopped no more than ten feet from us, and was just hovering, blinking, and zigzagging as it changed colors from orange to red. All of a sudden it shot up into the air about twenty feet, growing to the size of a basketball, while becoming much brighter and changing colors from red to purple and then green. It looked like a literal fire in the sky, It then split into two identical balls of light, still greenish color, and darting around very fast. All I could do was stare in awe while trying my best to establish some type of mutual communication with them. I didn't even think to turn on my recorder though. It had me in what felt like a trance. I'm thankful, however, that my girlfriend did manage to record. After a few minutes of trying to communicate, it seemed to have dimmed away, but only temporarily. I then turned around and closed my eyes, trying to process what I'd just witnessed, and when I opened my eyes, all I could see was a red haze all around us. That scared me. My girlfriend didn't see the red haze, but as you can hear in the video, she was terrified in general. I then started the truck and pulled out of that section of the graveyard. We were going to leave, but I just had to see more, so I pulled into the next dirt drive, down from where we were, and parked again. Multiple lights then started coming out of that gated section and started toward us, which didn't make much sense to us, because instead of just going over or even through the fence to where we were now, the lights traveled out through the main gate and then over and up to us, as if they couldn't pass over the threshold to the newer section of the cemetery without exiting their own section first through the gate. They then proceeded to put on what resembled a firework show, Dozens of multi-sized, color-changing orbs dancing around the night in what felt like our own personal gift from them. No words can explain it, really. I was just stunned by their mystic beauty. It did turn sour, however, eventually, 
and we left abruptly when my girlfriend started to scream at me to go. Please, go now. She had seen a dark hooded floating entity coming up behind us in her side mirror. She said she watched it come up and turn into her side door, moving right through her and over to me. She felt it pass through her. Upon recognizing the severity of the situation through her screaming, I then backed out onto the road and stomped on the gas. There were frogs all over the road, like I could never imagine. They covered the road and the ditches for at least 50 yards. It was so weird and scary. Now, on our way home, it seemed like I skipped some roads, because we ended up at a stop sign about two miles from our house, in what seemed to be no time. The drive back should have taken us at least 45 minutes, but my girlfriend swears that she saw the clock when we left, and it took us 13 minutes to get home. I know how this might sound, but I swear on everything that I know this story is 100% true. I could have gotten some small details off, like I'm not exactly sure if I got the color changes of the lights correct, but they were all the colors I've claimed, nonetheless. Since that October night in 2019, we've experienced some dark occurrences at our home, which is an old home now. One of them was me staring at a tall, dark, hooded figure standing in the front window as I was outside speaking to my daughter in our driveway. It stood and stared back for at least five seconds before it turned right and then just walked through the wall and fireplace. We would smell a putrid scent just there and gone multiple times. Then there was a handprint the size of a small child on the hanging towel in the bathroom one morning and there was lots of tapping and knocking throughout the house. We also heard what sounded like an old AM radio some nights, but the worst by far was the rage in our emotions, happening way too often. Thankfully, we eventually left that house, and things do seem to be normal again. I would highly appreciate anyone who might provide some insight to our experiences. Thanks again, Ray. In the coming days, I'll be putting Ray's pictures and video up on the forum for everyone to see. Our next story comes to us from Tiffany, and Tiffany's story is called Dreams of Loved Ones. Tiffany says, Hey there, I have always been sensitive to the paranormal, and I've had different encounters throughout my life. Today, I would like to share two very similar scenarios that have occurred. I have had moments of loved ones saying goodbye in dreams right before they pass away. The first time it happened, my great-grandmother had been in the hospital for about a week. By the time we got to the hospital, she was unable to speak any longer. We were there a few days before it happened. The night before she passed, I saw her in my dreams. She came to me and told me that she knew my mother and I had arrived at the hospital. She told me that she loved us. When my mom woke me to go to the hospital, I was in tears. I immediately told her that Granny said that she loves us and knows we came to see her. Later that day, I attempted to take a nap in the hospital waiting room when a security guard came by. He told me I was not allowed to sleep in the waiting room and I needed to get to the hospital room. My mom was sitting a few seats over and she didn't see the security guard. I grabbed my mom's attention and told her that we needed to go. I told her about the security guard that was just there, but when I tried to point him out in the hall, there was no one there. We brushed it off and we walked into the hospital room. About two minutes after we arrived in the room, my grandmother took her last breath. I stopped by the information desk right outside of the hospital room and tried to find the security guard. I gave a detailed description of the guard, and the nurses were very confused. They told me that they hadn't seen any security guards roaming their floor within the last 10 minutes when I saw him. The second story is much shorter, and it occurred last week. On Wednesday night, I had a dream about attending a funeral for another grandmother. While I was just standing there, she came up beside me, told me she loved me, and she said goodbye in my dream. On Thursday evening, my grandmother passed away in her sleep. I have had other things happen in my life, and I will write in about those another day. Thank you for giving people an outlet to share their unique stories. Tiffany Our next story comes to us from Sophie. Sophie's story is called Goodbye and Whispers. Sophie says, Hi Nick, this is Sophie. 
I've just recently discovered your podcast and have listened to it nonstop since. I would like to tell you the story of something that happened to my younger brother. I don't remember this at all, but I've been informed about it by my stepfather, and it seems very interesting to me. One day my younger brother, probably two at the time, was sitting on the floor in the living room. My stepfather watched as my brother looked across the room very slowly, as if something was walking in front of him. When it entered the kitchen, my brother said, Goodbye. This spooked my stepdad, so now he thinks his house is haunted. I have a second occurrence I would like to share as well with you, about something that happened to me recently. I was in my bed, under the covers, reading a book with my book light on. Suddenly, I heard a heavy breathing right beside me, as if someone was standing by my bed. I was so spooked about this that I didn't want to investigate, but I knew I had to figure out what was going on outside of the blankets. I slowly lifted my blanket and peeked around, but no one was there. I've mentioned this to my family members, but they just think I'm hearing myself breathing. I don't think it is, because I had been reading for at least two minutes before hearing the breathing noises. I don't know what it is that my brother saw, or what it was that was beside my bed, but I know it's paranormal. I send my best regards to you and the rest of the listeners. Stay safe, and have a great 2021. Sophie Our next listener story comes to us from Tom, and Tom's story is called Ghost Horses. Tom says, Hi Nick, I've been listening for about a year now, and thought I would tell you about a few experiences I've had with the paranormal. The one I want to tell you about today happened when I holidayed in Launceston, Cornwall, England, back in 2018. We stayed at a pub slash hotel called the Jamaica Inn, which was famous for smuggling. On the second night, I was woken up at around 2.30 a.m. with the sound of hooves outside on the stones in the big seating area outside of our room, and I thought who in their right mind was traveling by horse at this time of night. So I got out of bed, went to the window to tell them to be quiet, and there was no one there. Nothing but the sound was continuing, which I thought was weird. So I thought I'd go and investigate, plus I smoked at the time, so I went outside and had one. While walking down the corridor, I could hear chatting and laughing coming from the pub section of the building. So I looked through the glass window in the door, which was locked, and it was pitch black. No one was in there, but it sounded like a Saturday night. I continued outside, and I could now hear the chanting and busyness, but no one was around, and I could hear horses breathing as if they were right next to me. And this was going on for around 15 minutes, and didn't stop at all, and I finally returned to my room. The noises continued outside, and the pub was now silent, as was the corridor. When I returned to my room, I had the feeling of my stomach falling to the floor, and something wasn't right. And when I walked into my room, I saw a dark green figure standing at my side of my bed, staring at my fiancé in bed. He wore a dark green cloak, and was wearing a tricorn hat, like Jack Sparrow's hat. He then looked up at me with an angry disposition and then walked through the wall. I can safely say that I didn't get any sleep that night, with that experience and with the noise continuing outside. In the morning before breakfast, I went outside to have another cigarette, and noticed in the morning light that the stones in the seating area weren't there. It was cobbled. So when I finished, I asked a member of the staff, and she told me that the front area was stoned before the recent cobbles were added and the trading was done in that area back when the inn was used for smuggling, and there was a highwayman that lived in the area who stole items. Apparently, he wore a green cloak and a tricorn hat. And being that I never asked about the highwayman, I believe it wasn't in my head, and that it had happened. I then went to join my mom, stepdad, and fiancé for breakfast, in which my stepdad asked if anyone had heard horses the previous night. We chatted about it and laughed it off, but the strange happenings of that night still go through my head. Thank you for having a platform so that we can share our stories. I have many more if you'd like to hear them. Thanks again, Tom. Our next story comes to us from Kinsey, and Kinsey says, Hi, 
I have had a few encounters that could possibly be paranormal, though I am not so sure myself. Let's start with some context. I live in a brand new two-story house, so there's no entity that could have lived here previously, and one of my encounters has to do with my backyard. I was sitting outside with my neighbor, just hanging out, and nobody was out at the time on the street, because it was pretty late. I began to hear a sort of knocking sound on my wooden fence, like something would slightly hit it every now and then. It was a bit weird, but then it almost started to sound like slow scratching, and my neighbor had noticed the sound too. It wasn't that scary, until we heard a scream. It sounded sort of close, and not a good scream, no laughs. It sounded like someone being tortured or something, so we obviously went inside after that. My other encounter was in an upstairs room, and I had heard an almost screaming sound from my closet or attic, and I left the room because I felt very uncomfortable. I wouldn't have been so scared if it wasn't for my doorbell ringing almost right after that happened, and keep in mind that this was right around 1am, and I had seen nobody at the door when I looked out of my window. These are just two small encounters that I have no explanation for. It could be paranormal. Or it could not be. Our next story comes to us from Alicia. And Alicia says, First, I would like to start with a little backstory. I was a single mother with two small children. These experiences occurred between 2011 and 2014 in a small town in northwest Minnesota. The house was built in the late 1800s and I purchased this home from the bank for $2,500. Odd fact while looking back. When renovating, I remember removing multiple layers of wallpaper, and when I finally got to the bare wall, there were odd drawings all over it. I painted over them. The house always made me feel uneasy. It sat at the end of a street that was met by a gravel road and a river. When you would walk in the house, it felt dark and heavy but I made the most of it for my children, with what little I had. I didn't like the upstairs. Most nights, my two girls and I would sleep downstairs on the living room couch. It's where I felt the safest. Sometimes we would sleep upstairs, but I would never sleep well. My daughter, who was three at the time, would sing a lullaby in her sleep every time we slept upstairs. I would walk down the hall to her room to see if she was awake, and she would be sleeping every time. I'd go back to my room to lay down, and she'd begin singing again. This happened in the beginning, when we first moved in, and after that, my children and I never slept apart. When we would sleep downstairs, I would wake in the middle of the night to the sound of footsteps, walking back and forth upstairs in the hallway. On the days that my children were gone with family for sleepovers, I'd have the house to myself. I would, for some reason, not even knowing it at the time, would avoid the upstairs as much as I could. I would only sleep on the couch downstairs when they were gone, and most of my experiences would happen when my children were away. One night, I was sleeping downstairs on the couch by myself, and it was about 2 a.m. I woke up to what sounded like a man wearing heavy work boots, stomping back and forth upstairs in the hallway. I was frozen on the couch in fear. I then called my brother who lived in the same town as me, and I whispered into the phone that I thought someone was in my house. He raced across town in what had to be less than two minutes, and ran into my house, walking straight into my kitchen to grab a knife, and he searched my whole house. Nothing was there. Another night I went out with some friends while my children were gone for the weekend. I was dropped off at my house around 2 a.m. I unlocked the door, walked into the living room, and turned on the lamp. I then sat down in the recliner, and immediately my daughter's toy said these exact words. Hi, welcome back. This toy has never said those words before. I immediately picked up the toy and threw it outside. I didn't rest well that night, and the toy never came back in. Another night while my children were gone, I was sleeping on the couch and I woke up. I looked at the clock and it was 2 a.m., for some unknown reason, I had the urge to get up and move the curtain to look out my living room window, which faced the front yard. I was terrified to see a man standing in my yard and staring at my house, with his fists clenched, like he was ready to charge inside. I ran to my phone and called the local police department. 
I then ran to my front door to make sure it was locked, and the man disappeared. They sent two police officers over to look around my yard, but they never found or saw anyone. Looking back, I don't understand what made me wake up to look out that window. Another night, while my children were gone, I was sleeping in the living room at around 3 a.m., and I heard the faintest knock on my door. I remember getting up and walking over to the door and opening it without a second thought. It was a young woman wearing a long white dress with long white sleeves, and she had long dark hair. We both stood there face to face for what seemed like five minutes, not saying a word. I was half asleep after all, and confused at why she would be at my door so late at night. I finally said, I think you have the wrong house, and she said, Yeah, I think I do. She then walked down my steps, into the middle of the street, and then disappeared into the night. Looking back, I still can't believe how eerie the whole encounter was. The next experience occurred this time when my children were home. My daughters were two and four at the time. It was a regular weekday, and my oldest, who was four, was downstairs watching a cartoon on the TV. For this story, to give you a visual, my living room, dining room, and kitchen all connected with big open doorways. The TV was on in the living room, and she was singing and dancing in the dining room along with the TV. I went upstairs with my two-year-old to give her a bath, while my oldest stayed downstairs. While I'm in the middle of filling up the tub, my four-year-old starts screaming at the top of her lungs. I grabbed my daughter and ran downstairs as fast as I could. She met me at the bottom of the stairs, crying inconsolably. Once she finally calmed down, she was able to tell me what had happened. She said that while she was dancing in the dining room, she turned around and there was a tall man standing behind her. She said he stared at her and then walked into the kitchen and disappeared into the refrigerator. This blew my mind and I couldn't rationalize what she had seen. She was completely content when I left to go upstairs, and this truly terrified me, and I knew it was time to move out. We moved shortly after, and I never had another experience like that again. I still live in the same town, and sometimes drive by that house. It always makes me feel uneasy seeing it, and I often have dreams of moving back into that house, but I promise that will never happen. As tonight's edition of Paranormal Mysteries comes to an end, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for tuning in, and a special thank you goes out to Ray, Tiffany, Sophie, Tom, Kinsey, and Alicia for sharing their experiences with all of us. If you've witnessed something that you can't explain, please contact me at ParanormalMysteriesPodcast at gmail.com or visit ParanormalMysteriesPodcast.com and click on the Tell Your Story link. All of our contact information can be found within the show notes. Until next time, I hope you all have a safe and healthy rest of the week, and we'll see you back here on Friday with our next episode. From everyone at Paranormal Mysteries, thank you for listening, and remember, don't wait for the unknown to come to you. Get out there and find it.